What's up YouTube? As I mentioned in the previous video, I'm going to start preparing a bit more and sharing my past paper attempts and as always, if there's anything you disagree with or if I miss something, drop it in the comments and I'll get back to you. I am planning to sit the, the chartership exam this coming July, so yeah, my plan is just to pretty much do as much as this as possible and share them on YouTube for other people to comment so we can all get better together. So this is 2024 July exam question one, it's a teaching hub. I will go through just what I've got for um, one of my concepts and then I'll come back with another concept in another video and some of my calcs later. So it's a teaching hub, I'll just go through what I picked up with some of the main things personally here. Point one here, didn't really tell me anything, a bit of a general knowledge about or just like some about what the building is. Um, so the, the second note here just pretty much um, told us where we can limit our uh, bracing, which again ties into what our lateral stability system is gonna be. So that was pretty much the big takeaway point for me in this second point here. Um, they do mention about some masonry clad elevations. So you could discuss about um, your sort of like deflection limits, but yeah, the, the main thing here is that it's pretty clear. No visible bracing is permitted on any elevation. Uh, so point three here, and for me, this was the most challenging. I won't read it all out because you'll be able to read it quicker than I can speak it out. But there's a really uh, drastic change in your uh, column spacing. So they pretty much go level one, two, three, internal column spacings have a minimum of six meters center of the center. Um, and then on the plant roof, from the plant roof at level four, there must be no more than six number internal columns. So that's going to be when we go up and look at the architectural plans. That's a, that's a lot more than six meters center to center. Uh, yeah, so you'll find you'll have to sort of like change your uh, column layout and potentially add transfers where your columns don't align. So for me, yeah, that was the, the trickiest thing. And then they say, what is here? A minimum of nine meters center to center. So I, you'll struggle to do that anyway when you've just got six columns over such a large floor plan area. And then, yeah, this point here pretty much has a, um, a spot where you can't put any columns. Um, point number five here. So this pretty much just tells you when you go through all of this, it'll tell you your, your maximum uh, structural depth that you can use for, for you know, your, your floors and beams and whatever you use. That's that's what your, your governing heights are there. So just having a quick look at the floor plan. The, the thing that I found really difficult with this, um, and honestly, I think if I read this and I got to choose, uh, I haven't gone through the other questions yet, but I, I would honestly probably personally try and avoid this because after doing a, far, a few past attempts, what I'm noticing, it takes time to draw all of these uh, floor plans and different sections. And the more the floor plans change the more time you're you're going to spend uh you know doing your sketches and whatnot so what if we just look here what's in my opinion a bit misleading it says plans at level one to three but when you think about it okay if this is level one on the bottom here that's really the ground floor level so it's not really a suspended floor and then level two is a suspended floor but you know you could put a column underneath the lecture hall it's above the lecture hall which can't have a column and then level three is sort of like in the yeah sort of the middle of that lecture hall so ground floor plan uh level two i can have a column sort of supporting level two whereas on level three you know there is no floor within the middle here they're really three different floors all together so the fact that they kind of all whack it in on one architectural plan, you know, maybe it's fair and they got the dashed line here, but when you're putting your structural plans together, um, I think, yeah, it's going to be hard to capture all of that information with just this one sort of plan here. I don't think you'd be able to go level one to three. So you'll see what, what I've done here uh, later for my sketches. I'll just share them in a second. But yeah, that's essentially what I found quite tricky. The fact that this really does change uh, pretty much all the way up. And then here, you know, you, you're allowed a, a certain depth to do some transfer. And then on the plant room, we're gonna have to completely change the, the column grids to suit those requirements. So I'll quickly get into what I had here. This is again, and if anyone disagrees, put it in the comments, but 
This is after reading a few of the examiner reports. These are the, the key things that they seem to want to pick up on these concept sketches. I've just got a brief description um, where I'm going to talk about, you know, what the the high level sort of structural system is, including the lateral stability system. I'm going to discuss the foundation and uh, show a little sketch uh, about the yeah the foundation system that I'm going to do. I'll show my floor plans and then I'll demonstrate with sketches my lateral and vertical load paths. So if I get into it, I won't read this all out, but essentially for my option one, I'm using a reinforced concrete uh, flat slab. So I'm not using any beams. I've got the, the columns at more or less six meter centers and um, yeah, that's enough just to essentially have uh, slabs spanning onto straight onto columns. Potentially, I'll need some drop panels. I left those out of my sketches for the moment. And then my lateral stability system uh, is um, concrete shear walls, and I obviously leave it out of the elevations where they said there was no uh, no bracing allowed. So you'll you'll see it on my sketch. There's a couple of U shapes. So. Coming into my foundation that we've got here. Oh, another thing to note, yeah, they, they discussed the, if we come back to what the question says, where they talk about the ground conditions. You can see here, they've got bore one and some depths and bore two and some depths, and it's the same uh, soil between bore one and two, just at varying ground conditions. So you got one and two, so on section B it's varying, so that's what I'm showing here. I'm using board piles, 600 diameter, and I can, from the left to the right, it goes in by board piles the deeper to extend into that rock layer. And that's, I've just got a little sketch here showing that. Here's uh, the ground conditions, here are my board piles, and I'm noting that, yeah, my, my piles have to go and reach into that rock layer. And then I've got a ground bearing slab just on the soft clay. So that is the, the foundation system that I have chosen. I believe it's appropriate for the, the size um, and yeah, the ground pre condition presented here. I'm sure there are other options. And then if I get into my sketches, as I mentioned before, so I, I've got probably more than I would probably want to do given the amount of time you got here. So if I just zoom in a little bit, you can see a level one plan, uh, I'm kind of going, what is that, eight meter centers across here, and then I'm pretty sure I've just got six meters. So this is something I'm actually missing here, but I should I should actually show what those general spacings are here. But this is six, 12, 18, 24. So I've got six meters down the page, eight meters across, and then I have to vary that slightly where some of my uh, sheer walls are. Level one plan, and as I mentioned before, like I can have a column from level one to two, but not above it. So that's why it's a dash line there. That's why I've got level one and level two is a bit different. So I've just taken out the column. Just looking at this now, maybe you probably don't need to draw two plans. You can just have, have a dash line here, just indicating that one's below and one's above. But anyway, that's what I've done. Uh, level three is where it gets a bit different as well. Um, this is because I've got on the plant room above, which I'm somewhat catching here in the roof framing plan, I switch from a uh, pretty much a reinforced concrete uh, frame with a, uh, a flat slab to a steel frame to suit that where I've, I've just got six columns internally on the plant room. So the columns, I've got spaced, uh, uh, as you can see here, the sort of uh, 12 meter spans uh, going left to right. And then again, I've got like 12 meter spans with some cantilevers coming off uh, up and down the page here. So yeah, there are my six columns. Where the columns don't align with a column below, I, um, I'm showing I've just got a slab thickening here, which essentially kind of acts like a, a transfer. To, to pick up that additional moment in the slab on the uh, level four. Um, so if I just discuss where I get my sort of sizes from, the core wall, 250 thick. Um, the, the thickness is kind of, you'll just pick that up off experience, but it's more of a, a function of the uh, height to length of the wall. And 250 is 
more or less uh, an adequate number there. Uh, columns again, 500 square, they're pretty close columns. They could probably be smaller, but for, for this condition, it'll be most likely governed by punching shear of the of the slab. So you can obviously control that by increasing your critical perimeter by getting a, a bigger column or just adding drop panels, which is uh, um, probably the more efficient method. The, the roof steel structure that I, I'm showing here, I am using, I've just used, yeah, span to depth. So I'm going, uh, I think I've just jotted it down here. Yeah, span on 20. So that's given me a depth of about 600. And yeah, 12,000 divided by uh, 20 gives me 600. And then my uh, my slabs that I put down in here, yeah, 200 thick. So that's span on 30. That's probably a little bit uh, conservative for, uh, a uh, post-tensioned flat slab. So yeah, we got the, the 200 thick slab, we got the roof structure, 610UB, which is a Australian steel member, uh, rafters and columns. So that's, I've got roof bracing here, but that's going to be portal. I hope I discussed that in my, yeah, my lateral stability sketch. And then I probably just note about the, the different stiffnesses between the two and um, obviously portal is going to be a bit more flexible than your uh, shear walls for the building and just yeah I'd put that somewhere just noting um, different differences not ideal and capture the deflection difference especially with that uh, masonry wall um, and then yeah the slab on ground that won't be tied into the the piles that will just be um, yeah, bearing on that that soft clay or whatever that that first layer is that had a decent bearing capacity. So yeah, there are my sketches showing uh, pretty much my reinforced concrete building with the flat slab, the the sheer walls, and how I'm capturing those uh, the minimum spacing requirements, and I'm leaving out the column in the in the in the lecture theatre where I'm picking up some transfers down here for my steel frame sort of roof structure, which is, which is, yeah, I'm only allowed six internal columns. And then, yeah, I think it's a good idea just to, to show your appreciation of the lateral and vertical load path uh, here for my board piles. If I come down, I mean, this is pretty simple, but again, I think, yeah, my plan is just to to show my understanding more with sketches and sort of maybe some, some markups here as opposed to fill the page with some numbers that don't really mean too much just yet. Um, so here I'm just showing, you know, lateral load comes through my uh, diaphragm into my uh, shear core walls, comes down, we get a resultant moment and shear at the base. The, the moment will be taken by some couples in my piles in a sort of tension and compression. And then the lateral shear force will also be taken through my piles with some vertical resistance of the soil on those piles. So that's how we achieve equilibrium in the uh, lateral direction. And then the vertical load path, again, pretty simple. Yeah, just showing some vertical loads and the low, some bending moment diagrams in my floor plates and my columns picking up those vertical loads in compression and coming down into my ball piles into that rock. So yeah, there's a sketch of my understanding of the vertical and a lateral load path of this concept. I've got some concepts of some sketches of my floor plans. Uh, again, showing, yeah, what my understanding of the, the soil found the soil profile and the appropriate foundation system for that and yeah the lateral stability system clearly indicated as well as a, just a brief description so that's what i've got for concept one i'm gonna yeah plan to come up with concept two and then do that critical evaluation and then whichever one that i choose i'll uh yeah obviously go through and do b whatever this is challenge the brief and and uh, yeah, follow through with section two. 
So yeah, if, if you've got any uh, comments, yeah, drop it in the comments and I'll get back to you. Thanks.